So you live in New York, and you just found out that it's almost impossible to buy crypto here. And all you wanted to do was turn your cash into crypto, that's it. Well, fear not. Your favorite local New Yorker, me, is here to help. Today I'm going to show you how to buy crypto with your US dollars, how to buy small crypto coins with your current crypto coins if you have any, and how to set up a Web3 wallet as well to use on a decentralized exchange. So without further ado, let's get into it. So number one, you want to turn your cash into crypto. Those dollars that you work very hard for, you want to start turning those into assets that will start appreciating in value, uh, not financial advice. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this, uh, but the easiest and most convenient way is honestly to just download an app. Now, personally, I use Gemini to do this. Uh, this they're, they're an exchange based out of New York, and it's owned by the good old Winklevoss twins. I'm sure they could care a lot less about Zuckerberg now, right? <laughs> so head on over to the App Store, iOS or Android, by the way. Uh, and download it, or you can click my link below uh, if you want to use my referral link. Uh, I think you get an extra 10 bucks or something like that. Uh, but the point is that it's a very easy exchange to use, uh, very user-friendly, and they do have a couple of uh, different cryptos on there, a lot more than they used to have back in the day. So you're definitely getting access to a wide variety of different types of coins uh, just by signing up through them. And of course, something to keep in mind is that you're going to have to give them your information in terms of your KYC, which is known as your... Uh, Know Your Consumer, and AML, which is anti-money laundering. Um, all that stuff are different types of laws that these exchanges need to abide by to operate and run within the U.S. Uh, so you're going to be giving them your all your information down from your passport to your social security. So keep that in mind. Uh, another alternative is Coinbase, which is probably the most popular crypto app by far, uh, and also another comparable alternative. I used to use them, but I don't know. I feel a little more comfortable using Gemini for some reason. Um, I'm not really a big fan of Brian Armstrong. No, no offense, Brian. Maybe he's a cool guy, but I, I don't know. Just from what I've seen, not the biggest fan. Now, if you're a little more of a rebel, a little more of a rebel, uh, you don't want to use a bank, and you kind of want to go off the radar, per se, uh, you can use something called localcryptos.com. Uh, they actually allow you to use PayPal or even just in-person meetups to buy and sell cryptos. So whether you want to kind of get money onto uh, the crypto markets or actually take money off the crypto markets and you don't want your information to really be known, then this is actually something our website that you can use. Uh, just keep in mind that this is going to be a lot more riskier than using like your bank in this case. Uh, but you do technically get to keep your information to yourself, as I mentioned. So, of course, it's always an option. I just personally used it, uh, and it was actually pretty easy, um, especially once you get used to transferring crypto back and forth. It's really nothing to it. All right, so you're on Coinbase, you're on Gemini, you're on any other exchange app that you like to use, whatever it is. Maybe you have some Bitcoin, maybe you have some Ethereum. But you realize that there's something more to this, this crypto life than just the Bitcoins and the Ethereums of the world. The shit coins, the meme coins, uh, no, no, none of those. <laughs> the altcoins, the smaller cap altcoins. Uh, those are really where a lot of the people say that. I would, I would consider actually a lot more of the potential gains are to be had. Also, of course, other, other token potential losses can be had too. The point is that if you do want to get into more riskier quote unquote uh, altcoins or altcoins that aren't on these big exchanges, you're going to have to go somewhere else. Because part of the reason why these exchanges don't have them is because of them needing to comply with uh, regulatory uh, people over here in New York. So they they don't want, uh, you know, Gemini or Coinbase listing uh, the likes of like, let's say like poop coin or something like that, right? That wouldn't go well for the Winklevoss twins or Brian Armstrong if the SEC found out they were listing stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and go to a different exchange called KuCoin. Now, it seems to be, as far as I'm concerned, uh, one of the main or only legitimate exchanges that actually has most altcoins on it that doesn't require KYC, as we mentioned earlier, know your consumer laws, meaning that they don't require you to give them your personal information, your picture, your driver's license, social security. No, none of that shit. So these guys are definitely uh, where we're going to want to be going to. In terms of why they don't ask for that, I'll be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't think that they technically allow uh, people from maybe New York or maybe even the U.S. to use their exchange, but they don't do anything to stop it. So you can literally just go ahead and sign up there and start depositing and withdrawing uh, crypto pretty easily. Something to keep in mind, though, if you're making an account for any of these exchanges, you're going to want to put in what's called 2FA, two-factor authentication. Uh, this is just so that your account is more secure in case of some sort of breach of your password. Uh, as, we, as we know, that's kind of one of the biggest things with uh, holding your money on these crypto exchanges or really anywhere else. Uh, not only can they be hacked, potentially, but at the end of the day, you know, someone could not even hack the exchange, but hack you <laughs> by finding out your password. So you're going to want to have another way to authenticate yourself when you're logging in. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up, and most of these exchanges will tell you when and how to set it up when you actually first log in. But just make sure you have that set up because I would hate for anyone to kind of get hacked that way. And to be clear, I personally use KuCoin as well, uh, and it hasn't let me down yet. Um, obviously, I used to use Binance, and that was before, of course, they started blocking uh, New Yorkers and U.S. citizens off their app. So, you know, 
KuCoin is definitely going to be the best way to go here. They also have an app on the App Store, iOS, and Android, and I also have a referral link for that below. So if you feel so inclined and you want to get some bonuses, I guess, I don't even know what the, what the referral link comes with, but if you want to help your boy out, then you can go ahead and click the link below and sign up on KuCoin as well. Now that you're on Coinbase Gemini or KuCoin, you, got, you, have, you, know, you have your USD to crypto exchange and your crypto to crypto exchange, you pretty much have access to almost any crypto that you want to buy. However, there is something else, and this is what I mentioned earlier, decentralized exchanges. These are essentially exchanges that are built on top of a certain blockchain. Uh, we're going to be talking about two different ones here, uh, but essentially, you know, this is how you can get access to the altcoins that aren't necessarily public to everybody. And this is going to be where the kind of meme coins, the shit coins kind of come into play, because a lot of these exchanges aren't going to list those, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and it doesn't take much to make a crypto and just put it on one of these decentralized ones, since there is really no... Uh, I guess you could say, um, you know, bar of entry for anyone to make a crypto and just put it in. So let's just move on to decentralized exchanges and Web3 wallets. Now, there are a whole bunch of Web3 wallets and DEXs or decentralized exchanges that exist. But to keep it simple, I'm going to refer you to Uniswap if you want to buy Ethereum tokens and PancakeSwap if you want to buy Binance tokens. Now, to actually move your crypto from Gemini, KuCoin or wherever you want to move it from to being able to use it on the decentralized exchange, you need a Web3 wallet. It's pretty much a Chrome extension that holds your crypto and allows whatever website you're on or decentralized exchange to interact with it. Luckily, we only have to download one type of Web3 wallet, whether you're using Ethereum or the Binance Smart Chain, and that's going to be MetaMask. This is going to be the first instance of you actually having custody of your own crypto. Whenever you're using an exchange like Gemini, KuCoin, or even Coinbase, they have access to your private keys, therefore they own your crypto for you. In this case, since you're setting up your own wallet on MetaMask, you're, you actually have ownership of your crypto. So if for whatever reason you lose it, MetaMask isn't responsible for it. No one's responsible other than you. So because of this, you're going to want to write that shit down and keep it safe, okay? Again, MetaMask is going to present you with a seed or a passphrase. Write it down. Personally, I would say write it down in two different places uh, and just keep them safe away from prying eyes. Because uh, again, if that, for whatever reason, if, you're, if your extension is gone for whatever reason, let's say it gets deleted uh, and, you know, you lose your, your writing down or you don't write it down at all, then that's it. You're not going to get it back. So <laughs> so keep in mind that personal accountability is very, very important in this space, especially when you're handling your own crypto. All right, so go ahead and head over down below to click on that MetaMask link, and you're going to be led to this page, uh, their homepage, you know, the MetaMask homepage. You're going to want to go ahead and download the app here, click on Download Now, and install the MetaMask for Chrome. As you can see, they also have MetaMask for different browsers, so if you're using one of these, looks like you can also use it as well. It should be the same thing, uh, as well as an iOS and an Android app. Again, we're going to be focusing on the Chrome extension today, since this is probably what you're really going to want to be using it mostly for. So once you have it installed and you've already saved your uh, passphrase or seed, remember that's very important. Write that down once or twice just to make sure that you have it safe. Uh, go ahead and open MetaMask uh, back up over here, the little uh, fox icon. It's so cute, isn't it? Uh, and you'll already find you, you know your, your accounts over here, your balance of ETH is here, which is probably zero right now. Uh, and everything else is here. So if you plan on just using Ethereum, like Uniswap, or anything related to Ethereum, then you're fine. As you can see, the depending on the chain that you're on, it'll tell you right here. So right now, we're on Ethereum mainnet. This is where, by default, you're going to be on. But you want to add the Binance Smart Chain. So click on Ethereum mainnet, and go all the way down to Custom RPC. Now what you're going to want to do is, and I'm going to go ahead and drop the link below as well, because you're going to have to kind of copy and paste this stuff down. Uh, but essentially, you're going to have to type this stuff uh, verbatim smart chain over here in the network name in the new in the new rpc url you're going to type in https uh colon forward slash two forward, two forward slashes actually bsc data seed dot binance dot org backslash or forward slash i don't even know uh it's giving me the little red url is already present in existing list of networks because i've already added the binance smart chain so uh don't worry about this here uh chain id should be 56 Currency symbol should be BNB, since this is the native coin or token uh, for the Binance Smart Chain. And then, of course, on the Block Explorer URL, you're going to want to use HTTPS colon forward slash BSC uh, scan dot com. So already you can tell. Um, again, I can't add it because I already have it added, but you can just click on save and it'll add it right away. And from there, you should be able to click on your Ethereum mainnet and connect to the Smart Chain as you can see. Uh, you can already tell that this is different from my Ethereum wallet, and this is going to be very important. Um, although, since if you're going to be using Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum, please keep in mind that you need to switch your networks. So, obviously, this is my wallet on the Binance Smart Chain, and this is my wallet on the Ethereum uh, chain. 
So clearly two different things. Uh, just please keep that in mind when you're transferring Ether or Binance. The good part is that at least it is the same account, technically, like the same account address. If you just take a look at my address account number one here, I'll switch over to the smart chain and you'll see it's the same thing. So that's a good thing. So you can't really technically send it to the wrong account, but just keep that in mind. <laughs> so once your MetaMask is set up, you're going to want to go ahead and send Ether uh, over to uh, MetaMask. Or if you want to use again the Binance Smart Chain, go ahead and send over some uh, BNB over there as well. Uh, now, obviously, in this case, we're on Ethereum and it's going to be kind of similar to everything else. You're just going to want to copy your um, account address, which is right over here on the top, and paste it uh, to the you know to address on the exchange. So this is where you're going to want to be sending your crypto to. All right, so now let's use a decentralized exchange. As you can see, I'm Googling Uniswap here. Don't Google it. Do yourself a favor. Click the link down below. Um, the only reason why I say that is because there are a lot of scams right now going around where people are trying to pretend to be a certain website. So you might see a uniswap.org with like a couple extra letters in there to try to trick you into using their website. Please don't do that. <laughs> just, use the, just use the link down below. And if you don't trust me, go to the Twitter page and click on the link that they have there. But nonetheless, you're going to want to go here and click on Use Uniswap. And bam. Uh, or if you click the link below, it'll probably just take you to it right away. So as you can see, this is what a decentralized exchange looks like. Uh, you'll see this is my address above here and how much Ethereum I have. You should see that it matches exactly what I have on my uh, Web3 wallet. So that's how you know it's connected. It'll even tell you here on the little top left here of the wallet. And then, of course, depending on what you want to buy, uh, you can go ahead and swap it. So in this case, I have some ETH. Maybe let's say I want to buy some, um, I don't know, I want to buy some uni tokens, man. Screw it. Uh, let's see. And then, it, of course, you know, you go ahead and put it in there. I'll go ahead and put in, let's say I want to put in 0.1 ETH and I want to buy a certain amount of uni. Let's see how much it uh, ends up charging me. So as you see, it'll say that I'm eligible to get 8.4 uni for my 0.1 ETH. And if you go ahead and click on swap, it'll kind of give you a little bit of information. It'll say how much uh, fees is going to the person that's providing liquidity for the pair, um, what route my Ethereum is actually going through to actually get that uni, uh, as well as pretty much what the slippage more or less is. So in this case, uh, you know, you're going to have to confirm two different transactions. Uh, something to keep in mind, and I'm going to show you right now, is that Ethereum currently is experiencing some pretty high gas fees. As you can see, that cost about $70 to actually execute this transaction. <laughs> um, so it, it's not the cheapest right now. Uh, that's why a lot of people are using the Binance Smart Chain uh, and PancakeSwap alternatively. PancakeSwap is going to be relatively the same thing. Um, it looks a little bit more complicated, but it's really just literally the same thing. The only difference right now is that, yes, it is technically a little more centralized, the Binance Smart Chain, um, but it is cheaper. So keep that in mind when you're, whenever you uh, plan on using any of these decentralized exchanges or Web3 wallets. Ethereum, in this case, although they are working on scaling, uh, it is going to be the most decentralized option versus Binance Smart Chain a little bit faster. Um, obviously costs a lot less, but it is a little more centralized. So please keep that in mind. Additionally, if you did want to use some of these decentralized exchanges on your phone, you can actually download a Trust Wallet for the Binance Smart Chain uh, and Status or MetaMask for Ethereum. It's actually low-key a little bit easier, to be honest. But personally, whenever I'm interacting with the blockchain, I do like to be on a computer since it's a lot more uh, detailed rather than just being on your phone. Now, what about if you have accounts on all these platforms and you still can't find that juicy, juicy altcoin that you were looking for? Let's say you had one specifically in mind. You're going to want to go to coinmarketcap.com or coingecko.com. These are essentially crypto coin explorers where you can see all the details about pretty much almost any coin that you want to find. Uh, and obviously, in this case, you're going to want to go to the search bar you're going to want to go ahead and type the coin that you want to either research or buy. From there, you're going to want to go ahead and click on the markets tab, which is going to show you all the different types of markets uh, that your coin is being traded on. And then, of course, from there, you can decide which uh, exchange that you want to buy it on. But from there, you're going to have to do your own research on whether you can actually even access the exchanges on which that coin resides. Obviously, since we live in New York, a lot of these exchanges don't really accept us on there. But it doesn't hurt to try. Um, personally, if I were you, I would just maybe try signing up if they do require your information. Eh, I wouldn't do it, <laughs> but if it's similar to KuCoin where they just let you sign up, um, they don't really ask for anything, and that's fine, but one thing to keep in mind I should uh, kind of uh, add in here is that some exchanges, although they won't require your information to sign up and put money in, they may require your information to take money out, so please look at uh, deposit limits and withdrawal limits uh, once you do sign up on any of these uh, kind of low-key exchanges, because I kind of got caught with that the other day when I was using uh, Gate.io. Uh, so right now I can't even withdraw any crypto from there. <laughs> and I have right around like a thousand bucks just sitting there right now. So I definitely don't want you guys getting caught in the same thing. Uh, so please do your own research when you're looking at these different exchanges. I can't really report on all of them because there's so many. So uh, yeah.
Also, something very important I should mention. Uh, there's a mantra that we have here that's essentially not your keys, not your crypto. Centralized exchanges, as I mentioned, allow us to convert our US dollars to crypto and obviously make it very easy and convenient to trade it. But this doesn't mean that it's a safe place to store your crypto long term. Um, so as long as you don't have access to that private key, as we mentioned before, private key, seed, phrase, etc., uh, those coins technically are not yours. And obviously you saw that it was a little more work to set up that Web3 wallet uh, and use the decentralized exchange. But to be honest with you, it's the small price that you pay to take ownership of your own money. Um, and I will tell you every time that it's more worth it to literally have the private key, have your stuff safe away from the centralized exchanges as much as possible. Um, obviously, if you want to trade, that's something different. But to me personally, I keep most of my crypto offline. I have a very small amount of crypto on centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. A lot of mine is in stuff like hardware wallets, like Ledger uh, and other things like that. So as you continue in your crypto journey, I'm sure you'll be finding other different ways to store your crypto more safely than just keeping it on exchange. And again, I personally use hardware wallets for any cryptos that I'm going to the grave with, you know, like Ether. Links to everything I mentioned will be down below. And of course, when you're buying these cryptos, please do your own research. Don't just buy something because someone tells you to. Think about it. If the coin plummets and you invest into it because some sort of influencer uh, told you to buy it, do you really think he's going to pay you back just because the coin dumped and you lost some money? Hell no. <laughs> so it's just best to avoid that situation entirely, okay? Do your own research, watch YouTube videos, read the docs for some of the coins that you're buying, look at what other people are saying on, on Reddit, uh, all that stuff. Everything is very important when you're considering investing into something. This is like anything else that you choose to put money into. You got to find some background information, that's all. With all that being said, I thank you for watching this video. Welcome to the crypto space, and I hope to see you again soon. Peace out.